Hello, ArcStorming community. Welcome to uh, our last webinar of Teach on the Beach uh, competition. My name is Irene Palomo, and I will be your host today. Um, I just wanted to uh, thank you very much for being with us today and to kindly remind you that tomorrow is the last day for the regular uh, registration of this competition. Uh, we are helping Teach on the Beach, which is an NGO located in Busua, Ghana, to design their new educational center. We would like you to use uh, sustainable materials and easy to use, uh, easy to learn uh, construction techniques uh, to make it uh, doable for them to build uh, this new educational center. And one of the materials that we suggest you to to use in your designs is Ram Earth. I'm very uh, honored to have today one of our jury members, Alberto Figueroa, which uh, has successfully built his own classroom also in Ghana using this technique. Uh, this was part of um, a competition also uh, where they um, had to design different buildings and he designed a classroom um, this competition was organized by NKA, NKA uh, Foundation, and he will um, be with us today explaining us how he managed to not only design this uh, classroom, but build, fundraise, and uh, manage all the process um, until he had this uh, amazing building um, finished. So he will explain us uh, all this uh, today, and I'm sure it will be uh, very inspiring and useful for you, not only because he will be a jury, but also because he has experience in the country and with this material. So I would like to invite uh, Alberto. Hello, Alberto. Welcome. Hi, Hi everyone. Thank you very much uh, for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Yes, as I've um, I already explained, uh, it's an honor for us to have you today. And as I told you just before the um, webinar started, uh, first you will have now um, some time, around half an hour, forty minutes, to explain to all our audience how this project that you um, built in Ghana uh, went. And after the the um, your explanation, your presentation, we will have a Q&A session. So I invite everyone, all our audience, to write uh, any question that you may have and you want to Alberto to, to answer, because at the end of the presentation, we will, I will raise those questions to him. So Alberto, welcome. Your turn to uh, present uh, your project. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you, Rain. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm glad to be part of the, the jury for this competition and as well for the for this little webinar that we are doing. Um, my name is Alberto Figueroa. I have an office here in Spain. And as Irene explained, in 2018, uh, as part of a competition for NKA Foundation, we submit a proposal for a design and then we um, we were chosen uh, among a few others to develop like to fundraise and build uh, a school in Ghana that I'm going to show you the my experience or the, what I think is going to be helpful for this webinar for you um, I want to inspire you to do all different options for your for the competential entry but I think I will be able to provide more info information for to the process after uh, when when we choose the winners and they are chosen to to build the your proposal. How all the logistics and all the technical information that I learned by by doing it, like how you can uh, maybe avoid some mistakes and maybe like improve the process. And as I said, like it, this was organized by NKA Foundation, and we we were we had to design a classroom in the not classroom, but uh, I'll show you later. We had a campus, and we were located in like 
near Kumasi. It's the second city, if you don't know Ghana, like it's the second city, second biggest city in Ghana. And it's in the center of the city and on the center of the country where you can see more or less Accra is by the coast. And here is this one is kind of in the middle of the country. This was the location that we had, like it was a large um, green area that we have to later like clear and show, but kind of like more or less to show you, we were in a very rural area. And then we have to work with the environment and work with the location to for our proposal and later for the construction. Here is the location that we, where we had our, um, our where we were living for a while while we we're doing the construction, but near this site is where we built our project. This was the, the original four plan submitted by the NK Foundation competition. And we were tasked to design a building that will be part of a campus, kind of like, like this. Like we, we were free to design like either as a classroom or a space for the teachers, a uh, lunchroom, anything, anything that we will think that it will be helpful for to complete this campus. So different teams were chosen to build different parts of this campus. Like there was a team from Germany who built a library, uh, uh, another one that built a classroom. We, as we will see in the following a slide this is the competition proposal that we had so we decided to build to design a um, system of classrooms that it will could be either a small unit a bigger one it could be developed into a full campus so it was more like a system rather than just a specific design for for the location as you see here on the board like if you go like top to left to right, we I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit later on the on the diagrams. But the idea was to build two skins of the building, one for the like a wood facade that will like improve for the for the sun and breathing and cooling, and an inside wall uh, what it will form the the pure classroom or space. Uh, it will be formed by ram earth i'll be toned with like different like coloring and, and everything and the idea will, was to like build a system that you can like assemble and turn so we will create spaces between those two skins and also like different spaces that they can like generate by turning these little pieces pieces between both skins This diagram that we work like the thinking of the sun, like um, recovering rainfall, also the the weather or where the time of the teaching is going to happen, and it also like cross breathing the acoustics, and we were all are thinking to pay, pay a lot of attention about the how this classroom will operate because it has to be on a minimal operational cost. Because sometimes, like we go a little bit over the, the thinking and creating a, a great idea, but later this need to bring down to like construction, and also have to be in consideration the operational cost of that. It doesn't uh, doesn't make any sense if we build a building that needs to some have some kind of like power delivery or like heating or, or cooling throughout the year if there's no such um, um, if it's not possible on the side or the cost for the fund for the organization to run the school it will be too high for them so it will not be feasible so the process um, we designed the project we were chosen among a few and then this, uh, the competition organizer and gay foundation, they, they assign us to raise the, fun, the funding and look for the, um, the volunteers and bring it to construction. This was the um, originally, as you can see here, 
like we design a big system like on the on the middle diagram you can see like it's a full campus that we can do like i don't know 20 30 units and after we fundraise we will able to fundraise like seven or eight thousand euros so we need to adapt our design to the cost of what we were we will have available at the time so we decided to do a smaller building just with one facade but it will conserve most of the aspect of the, the original competition we want to like include ram earth we want to use uh, some kind of roof geometry that allow us to help with acoustics and as, and as well as collect rainfall for for the you know, washrooms and stuff and we want to instead of doing a more classical classroom here on the layout you have a classical classroom but we wanted to do a space that it will be more multi-purpose so the size was more like intended for multi-purpose like we wanted to create if you see the floor plan on the right you have the entrance and you have like a little space for reunion like where they have like somewhere they can hang their clothes or they can do storage some stuff and they have like a little lobby and then we pass to the main space where it, it can be used as a classroom or it could be used as multi-purpose like we can have some tables in the middle and they can do like a workshop space so we'll be up to later the full campus depending on which buildings they have to use this building for one thing or the other one as you can see we decide to do um first we kind of when we before we arrived we have um general idea of what we wanted but once we clear the space of the site because it was full of vegetation once we clear the this the site and then we we saw what kind of topography we have we saw the slope of the terrain and where we can like locate our building we adapt the construction and we adjust a little bit you see there is a little slope on the on the terrain going down so we have to do some kind of like um, concrete fo foundation and on top of that we build ram earth and above that we continue with wood structure and as well as the roof that uh, consistent on wood beams and some kind of sheeting on the roof these were the volunteers uh, among others many uh, helped me and they came to to ghana to be part of the experience and and contribute and work to building the the school this is the site after cleaning all the vegetation you see on the back like we have tons of vegetation so for a couple three days we have to clear this entire site so we can store some equipment the very little uh, equipment that we have but also like earth or concrete or sand everything and clear the space to be able to work it's important that you consider the cost um, and the logistics of the construction because these buildings is nice it, we encourage in the competition phase to be creative and be experimental and propose new ideas but later on once once it has to come to realization we need to tone it down a little bit to be able to build it does it because it's, it's not the same as an an idea on the competition where you submit an idea could be crazy and wild but it's not going to be built in this case the intent is to be built after so you need to take that into consideration the construction the logistics or, or the materials that you're going to use or how labor intensive is going to be so in this case, we have all the factors. We have the, the money that we were able to, to raise, the amount of people that we have, and also the materials that we had, our, they were available. As well, there is something that um, most in the Western countries, we, we want to provide our te the technology that we develop using in our home countries. We want to bring it here and develop and use it and we are not we are kind of um we're not afraid to 
expose materials and to be more creative in that way. We have to think as well that locals in where the project is going to be located, this could be Ghana or this could be Cambodia, it could be anywhere, but the locals, they have also other priorities. So take that as well into consideration, for example, uh, we wanted to use in our case, no, it could not be for this competition, but in our case, we wanted to use uh, bamboo for the roof. And once we arrived there, the locals, they told us that they didn't want to have any bamboo on the building because they remind them to kind of like more poor buildings. So they wanted to have something nice. So that's what I mean when, when we have to think of what the locals want because maybe they have other, uh, other priorities. So have that also in the consideration. In this case, we start like digging the, the foundation and you see the slope of the building that it was almost like a meter from point to point. And we have start doing some kind of concrete with some basic um, steel on the foundation. And we have some basic steel rebar and then we pour the concrete by batches and then we start uh, using to have some kind of stepped foundation on top of which we will build the ram earth. Since we had a very extremely limited budget, we had to be as resourceful as we could. So we have to, in some cases, repurpose some framework from other teams or we have to be um, taking use or reuse as much framework as possible, Th take that into consideration as well, because it feels like sometimes the money is unlimited or is going to stretch so much. But in reality, you have to consider that you have to pay local workers, whether like they are specialized, like a carpenter or a mason or basic uh, workers. We even pay them, for example, the ladies who bring the water from the river all the way to those like blue deposits, we have to pay everyone, pay the materials, pay the framework, pay for for the um, equipment, like could be, for example, like some, some circular saw or some ha uh, hammers. We broke hammers like every week. So you need to take that into consideration as well as, for example, the amount of earth we need, like some little mistake that I, that I will explain a little bit later, but one thing that I didn't account for is the amount of earth we will need for the wall because as you saw on the on the previous um, building we built this with beam with Revit and we were able to obtain the volume of earth that we will need for the um, for the ram earth but uh, I didn't take in con into consideration that when we pour earth, uh, earth for the ram earth we you do batches of about like, for example, 10 centimeters, and then you have to compress it to half. So most likely you will need twice as much of earth as you thought you will need. So we finished with the, the concrete uh, foundation. Here are some volunteers and some our lo uh, local workers. We did the, um, the concrete by hand because the speed that we were do, building framework and curing that, that concrete, it wasn't fast enough for us to use any other equipment to create uh, the concrete. As you can see, we, we already have this stepped uh, foundation and on, the, on the left, we start building the ram earth walls we were able to use already existing framework that it was made of, of metal steel. Um, I highly encourage you in the case that you are going to build it that use steel framework because the key aspect on the construction for the ram earth is the speed because it's very labor intensive. It takes a lot of time to set up the frame and the, the framework and the homework and you need to it takes a lot of time so you cannot speed up anything even if you have two it takes a lot of time to set up build you need to go uh, layer by layer i need to build it 
and you cannot go faster than that. So if you can speed up on the process of the form work, uh, it will help a lot. And also you can repurpose every time because the problem you always have with the wood is like when you came it apart, sometimes it breaks. So this this way, even if it's more a little bit more cost costly, you can repurpose almost infinitely. You can use, I'll show you a little bit of detail, but it was two metal pieces that uh, it has some like square tube uh, on for reinforcement. And we have some rebar that it was crossing through. So we have to level it and then we cover the inside with palm oil to facilitate removing the foam work and some plastic tube. So we will be able to pull later the, the rebar on it. As other teams explain, but just in case this is your first webinar, like how the Ram Earth uh, works, like you build a foam work and then you pour the mix that you prepare with pure um, clay earth mixed with about 7%, 10% of cement and slightly moist. Don't dump it, don't make it too watery. And then you pour a layer, you compress it, you put another layer, compress it, put another layer, and then you remove the cast. But as you can see here, the diagram is very beautiful, but uh, you most likely you will not be able to build a foam work all the way to the top because you cannot work so deep. So you need to do a, a little bit of uh, a small layer and then move alongside or up your foam work. The good thing is like the, the foam work, the ram earth uh, cures way faster than concrete. Concrete you will need for for proper concrete um, execution, you need seven days, but you can remove the, um, the foam work like after a couple of days, if it's not going to have heavy loads, but with foam work, you with ram earth, you can remove it like after a couple of hours, two, three hours and then you can move it and you keep working on the next patch. This is the foam work that we use. And I, as I said, like if you, where you are going to work, you don't have one, I highly re uh, recommend you to use, to talk to um, a welder, a steel workman on your area and build one because it's going to, it's going to help a lot to have a uh, better finish and to speed up the process. As you can see, we have two big metal plates with some uh, square tube that, as reinforcement. And then we had um, a rebar that it was passing through and some plates so we can screw and maintain the both plates. And then we can like level with and make sure it's straight and then we start pouring and then we remove the cast. The, um, I have a, a my Irene, Irene like she will play the um, have a YouTube page where I documented the whole process of the construction of this school. But there's one specific that the um, I explain how to do here's the YouTube link, how to do Ram Earth, and it's very helpful because there are certain things to I didn't count at the moment that once we start building and, and we knew people, locals and not locals, that they were working on on Ram Earth, they give us some advice and they teach us how to do it and I record it on the video so you can learn as well and, and avoid certain mistakes. For example, um, you cannot use the same earth that you dig up even if it's very clay, uh, full of clay. Like as you can see on the picture, like not the, the one at the at the bottom, but the one at the back is very red. It feels like you can repurpose the same earth that you're digging up for the foundation. You can repurpose for the walls. You're going to do that. You have to use a pure clay earth and you will be able to tell that it has no organic material in it. You will be able to tell that, that by smelling it, because if you smell and it smells like earth, it, it contains um, contains uh, um, vegetation or it contains organic materials. But if you smell it and it doesn't smell like anything, it's pure clay. So 
that's the one that you need to use. And also, I recommend you to, before you start building, build a few batches outside your building and tie different percentages of concrete, of cement in this case, to, to see which percentage you want because the fewer cement you use, it will be more earthy, more red, more, but it will have less consistency and it will take longer to cure. If you use more cement, it will be more gray, but stronger. So you need to fine tune and find the, the proportion that you want. So the one we went for, I think it was like about 7%. And then you mix it and you start spraying with water and you mix it, mix it, mix it. And then you have to pour it immediately. Don't think that you can do a huge batch and then I just you build one day or the next one, you will repurpose because it needs to have the, the right amount of water and the cement will start like curing as as soon as you have water. Here are our co-workers that we bring buckets and then we pour, we pour a layer of about like 10 centimeters and then we compress manually. Um, it's good to, to come with local workers, especially if they work on the system because they they get more familiarized with this technique and as well maybe they have more strength than the local workers to properly compress the ram earth and have like a better finish and more consistency this is the system this is a picture from the inside and you see from the we have some plastic tubes that it will separate exactly the distance that we need and, and this foam work like will sit on top of the previous batch and or overlap a little bit and we will have some rebar connecting one to the other one also all the way to the foundation and with some manual work uh, we have some stumps and we cover it with plastics and we start stomping you see on the back like we have some loose earth and on the bottom you have the compressed one if you use a bigger stump, um, it will be more um, homogeneous. It will be more uniform. If you use a smaller one, you can compress it more, but it will squeeze it a little bit and it will move to the side. So you will keep squeezing in and out. So I recommend to have a bigger one from the middle and the sides of uh, are adjacent to the foam work. Use a smaller one so you can compress the little bit of earth that is coming up so you have a more consistent a more polished finish <clears throat> this is a picture from the inside you see like a, a big batch of the bottom and that will be compressed all the way to the half so it's important to consider the volume of earth you are going to need which is about like 50 percent more than the actual volume of the wall or it could be up to twice as much. You see the picture here, the, on the front, the lady is sitting on a, on a small bench that we did, that it was the first batch of Ram Earth. And on the back, we are building the, with the phone work, we are building on top of the foundation, we are building the, the perimeter wall. And then we have, uh, we'll see later, a uh, wall in the middle that will be the the wall bit that is divided in both spaces and the back uh, the the chalkboard. Here we're moving forward. You can see in the middle that there is a wall that is a phone work. There is where we will build the the backboard. We have to continually like change the we use. You see here on the left, uh, that's Eddie, and he was like covering the stump with um, the sack for the rice. We repurposed it to cover the stump, so we were able to like uh, stomp and then uh, remove pieces of of earth when we were pulling it. 
and also preserve and and, and help with the stomping. <coughs> and as I said, I, we were using as well. You can see here on the inside. We were using palm oil to cover the inside of the wall of the phone work to help later remove the the phone work. It smells really bad, but it is helpful because otherwise you have to wait longer to cure everything and remove it so it doesn't a chunk come out. Here's the perimeter wall that is completed almost, and we have the middle board, the middle wall that is separating the kind of like the lobby from the classroom. As you can see on the perimeter wall, you see on the right, there is a little bit of a bed in the wall, on the top of the wall. That is because we will place some steel bar for connecting and then we'll pour concrete and they will be the, our connection for the wood structure that will go on top. You will see on the, on the following picture. Here are a couple of videos that Irene, Irene is going to play for us. <clears throat> uh, what we decided to do is to build some kind of frames of wood that it will be easier to do on the floor and it will be easier to assemble. And we can like place them on, on, on top of those connectors and like pierce them through and place that you will see on the next video that we'll play later. And this way, the um, even though the ram earth is very time consuming, very labor intensive, this way we were able to speed up a lot with the wood construction and also reduce co cost and adjust to our limited cost. We were spraying here the all the wood structure to to prevent for like any bugs or anything that will deteriorate the the wood structure here are the same frames on on both short walls we have the same height but on the longer sides you will see like here we place one on top we screw it because there is a hole and that's the connection like you see around the wall on top of the wall there is some kind of like rebar connecting and some kind of concrete that will help us to connect the wood structure to the ram earth and as you can see on both on the long side there are like longer pieces so that way like both uh, wood frames will be one place and then connected with a piece of wood and later on the next scene, you will see how the beam will connect between each frame. So it will be easier to build everything, especially because later, like we don't have any cranes. We don't have, we barely make, were able to do any kind of like scaffolding or anything. So you need to take that in consideration that as soon as you move above a meter and a half above the floor, everything is start to get more complicated. Especially if you have to do ram earth, you need to bring the earth all the way up. Imagine that you have like two meters, two meters and a half, three meters of wall. You need to bring all the earth, all the way manually, all the way to the top. The phone work, you need to pull it manually all the way there. Everything gets more complicated. So you need to take that into consideration. You don't have, or maybe you have, but in this case, we didn't have any equipment. You didn't have any cranes. Here's a picture of how we finish all the wood construction on the perimeter. And as you can see, there's like a little mountain that is doing is because we place the beams between each frame. So it sits there and we just nail them through and then we can build with little rafters in between. You can see through like there is a wall that is in between that will be later finished. And this was the final once the project is finished. As you can see, I'll get more into detail. Like we want to, you see some colors and we took some patterns. What we do, we wanted to have a very breathable building to be able to have a connection with the outside and also like natural ventilation. But we wanted to use the skin as 
uh, fabric that if you're not from Ghana, like uh, maybe you don't know, like it's called kente. That is a natural fabric from that uh, a natural fabric that they will design there in Ghana. I'll, I'll have a picture later that I will show you. This is the inside. This is the lobby that you as you enter. What when we finish the uh, I'll go a little bit back. When we finish the back wall, we level inside with earth, and then the mason that we have to rely on a mason. He made a concrete slab to have a polish finished, and the wall for the jackboard, both sides we wanted to plaster and have like a smooth finish because maybe we'll have some like furniture there. And on the other side, you will see we have the jackboard. And but we wanted to leave the inside of the exterior walls as pure as from Earth. Locals, the local uh, school director, he wanted to cover everything on plaster, but he wanted to keep it like the ram Earth as natural as possible. This is the picture from the inside. We had uh, just the checkboard that it was like a little bit recessed and polished. And on top of that, later they will just bring with some kind of like a black paint, and that will be the checkboard. On top, you see there's a little bit of a sky ceiling. I wanted to use more for the roof, the that kind of transparent plastic uh, sheeting, but it was very co extremely costly and it didn't give me like very good guarantees that it will perform well over the time so we just wanted to do a little piece to have some light over the checkboard also i didn't want to turn the whole classroom into like an oven because during summer they don't have class but depending on the time after if they don't have raining season like after 11 a.m., 12 a.m., start to get like really hot, and I didn't want to abuse with the sunlight, direct sunlight. I wanted to use as indirect as possible. For the roof, uh, we complete the, the roof between beams with some wood rafters, and on top, unfortunately, the most used material is metal sheeting. Um, I didn't want to use that one, I because makes a lot of noise it's not very eco-friendly we were able to find some kind of panel that was made kind of like more like a like a composite composite and kind of like a mix between different things and it was has like a red finish on top so it was like a, a middle ground decision uh, compromise to choose this material. Originally, we wanted to do something else. We wanted to use bamboo or we wanted to use something else, but this was the material that we were able to to do. And the locals, they were agreed to use because there were a lot of negotiations on which materials we can use or not. We wanted to use for the exterior of the facade, we wanted to use some kind of like, uh, the leaf of um, a plant that it was very long and it will be dry and then we wanted to weave it along this wood frame on the wall but they said absolutely not they didn't want to as well as uh, bamboo or anything that resembles any of that wood was the best option that they had and um, if it was up to them they will have everything on concrete or concrete block or so it was a lot of negotiations and to have preserved as much as we wanted from the project and like please them in a way. This is a, a picture from the classroom from inside. Uh, the idea was to like complete the campus and after the um, the education minister or the ministry uh, will come here and certify the school and then will provide for the furniture or, or whatever they need, the books, the materials, everything. We wanted to use color as much as possible for the structure, for everything too, because it's something that they like a lot on the original project. 
and we wanted to be more colorful and they appreciate that a lot because other teams they have different structure different projects but they were more toned down they were morely concrete and earth and they appreciate a lot that we use a lot of color for that this is the material that, that i was talking about on the left uh, upper left you see the um, uh, a gentleman who's uh, weaving the kente, which is um, a piece of fabric that it has its own language because um, it's made for specific purposes and it has a meaning. The pattern, the colors, everything that you design, it has a meaning. Like, for example, if a politician or someone who is important comes to the um, or asks for a special one, they design it especially for that person or uh, maybe they designed one that means education or they means anything so this this design of this language of this color of part of part of the culture we wanted to incorporate on the on the project so that's why we treat the outside of the building with color but also with some kind of like creating a pattern of of kind of like a kente using colors and patterns and creating like a like a fabric that uh, wraps around the facade we wanted to use the that kind of weaving to complete it and have like a full fabric but since they didn't want it so i just wanted to leave it like this as you can see here uh, there's a little close up And that will be it. If you have any more questions, like we'll go through them. And if I forget anything, I'll come up with whatever you need. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Alberto. Uh, very interesting. Everything that you share with us, I'm sure it was uh, very inspiring for everyone. Uh, Thank you. I wanted to congratulate you because, as I said in the beginning, and you basically explained all uh, through the presentation, not only you design the project, but you build it, you fundraise it, uh, you recruited all the volunteers, you hired the labor, uh, local labor there. So it's it's really amazing uh, the work you have done and the result. It's very very nice. So congratulations. Thank you. Um, and first of all, uh, well, I've, I've seen we have already two questions. Um, while we wait for someone else to, to write uh, their questions, I wanted to, to ask you about um, the whole experience um, from being an architect to really building your own building. Uh, you've already uh, mentioned some, some interesting uh, lessons that you have learned. But if you will have to choose one advice to give our participants in this competition, it's also going to be in Ghana. They need to take care of the budget because it's going to be easier for the NGO, uh, weather condition, labor. I don't know. If you, will have, if you had to choose one advice, what will it be? I will say to think as well what the local user is going to appreciate or want like to tailor the project to the side the culture and kind of what they what they want have that in consideration because as i said in the beginning like this is good that we came up with like crazy ideas or or we have our own agenda to design something but also have on the rear mirror like maybe it will be difficult at the, on the on the designing competition phase to guess what they want but it was if you look up the maybe other project that was built or from other teams or other competitions like maybe you see something in common that maybe resonates with you so maybe like you can learn from that okay yeah, sometimes sometimes we think uh, something it's better from our own perspective, but when you get there, you realize that uh, maybe the needs 
and the reality is different. So yeah. for, we should take into account that. For me, it was like, kind of like shocked me, but kind of like, uh, I wasn't expecting that. Like for the, for choosing the materials, like we wanted to use more natural material. We wanted to use bamboo. We wanted to use that kind of uh, long leaf that we were able to mm -hmm. dry and weave along kind of like the same as we would use for wood or anything other natural material. We wanted to use that and have like a like a very a natural. Leaf and resourceful and, and local uh, materials. And it shocked me a little bit that they didn't want that because for them psychologically, like it felt them more like um, low cost and they wanted to have something more polished, something that we take it kind of for granted on our west on our western uh, countries, mm -hmm. like more like concrete, more like what we through architecture we had on the eighties. Like we were like looking for like those like concrete like brutalism, mm -hmm. like uh, the concrete structure, the steel, the everything. So they they prefer in their eyes, at least for the finished project, they want to have as smooth and as polished as possible. Okay. And for us, we wanted to do the opposite. Mm -hmm. Okay, very interesting. And a more practical question, because you also share a lot of um, a lot of advice, uh, like for example, when you were explaining about uh, the ramp earth, how to choose uh, the different earth while smelling it. No, if it smelled like earth, it had the organics, so it was was not um, the clay uh, that we wanted. Um, when and you also mentioned that of course budget was very important and well mm, six thousand euros right was the final budget you yeah uh, between six and seven thousand seven thousand euros to build this back then like it was like five or six years ago i don't know how the currency changed but okay but it's a reference and yeah. it's it's really impressive because it's a very limited budget um so you use uh, ramp earth wood uh how, what about the prices of these materials? Like, what was the most expensive material back then uh, that you used and the cheapest one? Um, not by the material itself, because that's something that you have to also consider that um, it come, uh, the cost comes with everything around it. For example, earth could be really cheap, but since it's very labor intensive and very slow, you need to pay the wages for the workers for longer time. Um, the construct, the delivery of the truck delivery, like um, for us, it was delayed a week and a half. So we were able to to continue for the work, and it was very pricey. The just the delivery, not the earth itself. With the wood, it was. It seems like a little bit more pricey than, than Ram Earth, but it was it's way faster. And even though you have to pay a, a carpenter and an assistant, we were able to finish the roof in like a week, two. For the Ram Earth that you saw, it took us like a month, a month and a half. It was it's mm -hmm. very slow and, and other teams, they build their own projects and they build two meters and a half, almost three meters of Ram Earth. It took them like they have twice as many um, local workers and they have to, sometimes they work like six days a week and a lot of uh, volunteers and they have, it's very intensive. It's, it's really nice. It's mm -hmm. extremely, uh, I think it's, it's a beautiful construction system mm -hmm. and obviously way better than using like a pure concrete wall or a, blo a concrete block um, but it, you have to also come in, take in consideration that it's very labor intensive and you have to balance what you want, like mm -hmm. take everything in consideration. Yeah, so it's a, a mix of factors that you need to take yeah. all of them into account, not just the price of the raw material. Yeah. Okay. So I think we can go uh, now to see the questions of our audience. Okay. Um, Let's see the first question from Josue Market. He's asking, how do you manage the structure's calculations? I mean, it's a light structure, but how much you can load over the RAM earth? For, 
I was able to calculate the 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 wood part because even though the wood wasn't coming from um, uh, somewhere that it was certified, um, I can have some kind of guess more or less on. Uh, so I was able to calculate some kind of sections for the beams and the wood and everything. For the rammers, um, it was eyeballing I more or less because since we our building, it was very very small like uh, unless you have two three floors uh, levels and your the load that you're having for just one level just the roof is very small especially if the higher you go on the percentage of cement the stronger it will be the the walls after the ram earth is cured and the ram earth is properly done like compressed and, and properly done it's extremely hard like it could be comparable to a concrete wall for a small scale, uh, if you can build like one, two stories, no problem using low barrier. Like we were using like a like a thick wall, so in that case, it won't be a problem. It's not. It, sometimes people uh, confuse ram earth with something that we call espentapial, which is like using around the wall. Like you can, you have uh, a formwork that is maybe made of wood. And you pour the the earth but it doesn't have any cement so you compress it a little bit and you remove the cast and then you put some plaster or, or cement and then that if you apply uh, a load on the wall sometimes they collapse and they break but on the ram earth since it has cement the cement helps to bring everything together and it, it brings a lot of uh, resistance for loading Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so basically, it uh, you really need to to see depending on the on the project and once you are there, right? Because yeah. it's, um, there is not a, a, a really arithmetic calculation, right? Uh, not that I knew at the moment, and I didn't run calculations for the load bearing of the wall. The load bearing of the wall was the least of my worries for structurally. I was more worried about the wood. The, the for the walls, I didn't have any worries. If okay. I'm going to do like two or three stories, like uh, levels, maybe I have to run some calculations. But if you're do doing just one one story, like two or three meters, I saw th there were other projects that they were like have tall walls. They have like mm -hmm. three, four meters and like three and a half something. And didn't have any problem, especially since most of the roofs that they are built in Ghana are made of wood and sheeting. So usually the, the, the roof structure is extremely light. Okay. Okay. So not a huge problem. Okay. This uh, Patalab architects, they are asking, is this composite roof sheet efficient in terms of heat insulation? Is it available and costly accessible in all Ghana? Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember exactly the name of that, but it's very similar to metal sheeting on, on cost wise. Um, uh, in terms of uh, heat insulation, negligible is like similar to to metal sheets, maybe a little bit more, but similar. I wanted to do maybe a different system, maybe for future projects. I want I will do. I recommend something like combining some kind of like a base made of plain wood and and spacing and then have the sheeting. But at the end, since we will have such an open building and very breathable, uh, as long as you cast shade, uh, it helps tremendously. And you have to consider that the more intensive uh, sun uh, time, maybe they, they are not, they don't have class. So okay. during the winter where they have class time. Okay. Did you consider using thatch roof? That what is that? Um, straw paja. Ah, uh, it wasn't available on our area, and I'm pretty sure the the locals they didn't want that. Anything that resembles anything natural, that resembles, right? Too cheap. Kind yeah. of. Yeah, and also because it requires them to like. Reapply after a few years. I know that the 
the project that we're doing for the competition, the original building, they, they are using that. And it's extremely good uh, thermal efficient. It's really good. But you have to be considered that you have to replace after a year or a few years. Okay, so the maintenance, maybe it's not ideal. Yeah. And also, like, I didn't have any experience building with that, so I wouldn't be able to build it. Okay. Okay, let's see next question from Miriama. Was it what was it hard to deal with locals to get materials, or did they deliver stuff as promised, or you have any problem? Very good question. Um, we had uh, ups and downs. Thankfully, we had one representative from the NKA Foundation from the competition who was helping us to mediate with local suppliers. And through him, we were paying him, and he was delivering like the major stuff, like a truck full of earth or sand or cement or small things like little tools like hammers and stuff like that. We would go directly to a store and buy it ourselves because like uh, stores with like hardware stores, like small hardware stores, they are like everywhere. So you can buy that directly anywhere. But for like big purchases. It's better to to count someone local because first of all, uh, especially for example, if you're going to buy wood, like I had I had him as intermediary because as soon as they see you and you are not local, you are going to have a different price. You're going to have a higher price because they know that you can afford it. So you have the overall uh, price. Yeah, this is it's European. It means like white. So not only the cost, but also to you need to know that it moves in a different rhythm. That maybe if you are from Europe or United States, we hear an extremely important timing, and we value a lot like when you supply it, how you supply it, everything. Uh, there maybe it takes different time. Like maybe you order and it has to come on Monday and maybe come on, on Thursday. So it has a different timing. I didn't have any bad experience with my local workers, but with some suppliers, for example, the sand, it took us a week and a half later and they delivered the sand. We were waiting for a, a week and a half and we cleared a huge path for the truck to deliver, to come backwards and deliver it on our side and then they deliver it on the wrong side on so we have to wheelbarrow all the sand all the way to our project okay yeah i mean uh, it's it's always at least uh better it's always better at least to have some local uh person worker that can help you out because yeah. if, when you are in a unknown country different country you don't have yeah. contacts or relations or anything so for sure it that was uh, very helpful in this uh, case in, in this case in ghana like you don't have any problem with the language because absolutely everyone speaks perfect english okay. but the thing is to learn how to negotiate or how to deal with locals mm -hmm. especially for big purchases it's highly yes. recommended yeah okay uh, i think this is the last question uh, from Ranuma, she's asking, uh, does from earth construction need long-term maintenance? If yes, then in how many years' time? Thanks in advance. And would you suggest any other alternative to ramp earth construction? Um, no, not that I'm aware. Like you, even projects here in Europe or North America, they use ramp earth and they use it for mostly for outside. So once the the wall is cured the cement start working into action as i said it's like as as hard as concrete wall like it's extremely resistant you cannot break it you cannot like it doesn't erode like it will do the same as like a like a earth wall like tapial it's extremely consistent like maybe the little rocks if you have little rocks like the Maybe they were children, they will pick it up if they can, but the the whole wall will remain there for a very, very long time. And 
I like a lot of the system. I don't recommend to any other, like maybe you can play with others, but it's good to have a combination of both, ram earth and wood. Punctually, if you can use some steel for the roof, but with wood and ram earth, uh, you can have very nice projects. I had a, um, there was another team, a uh, German team. They, they were a lot of uh, people on that team. And they, instead of using Ram Earth, they decide to um, create their own bricks made of mud. The same earth that we were using, but instead of like casting it on a wall, they had a machine to compress and build bricks. I don't recommend that at all because if Ram Earth is a little bit cost intensive, building your own bricks is insanely uh, time consuming and labor intensive. And it took them a lot of people, a lot of time to just build the walls. And at the end, it doesn't look as nice as Ram Earth. Like we, the other one of the webinars that we had with Hive architecture, like see once you control how you pour the ram earth, you can have a beautiful uh, finish. You can have some patterns and change, change the how much cement you use or which kind of earth are you using to pour. So you can have beautiful patterns. And once you start like polishing your technique and try different things, you can have amazing uh, finish. Well, as you mentioned before, uh, in your uh, YouTube channel, you have uh, more videos explaining Ram Earth, uh, the use you had and everything. So I invite uh, our audience to visit it so they can learn more about your experience using Ram Earth. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, so much Alberto. I think uh, there is no more question, but we have already been um talking with you for one hour so uh i am sure you are exhausted but thank you so much thank you for having me. very interesting to listen to you and uh well we will see each other in july uh during the jury deliberation i just remind everyone that is um listening to us right now that we will have this um, the competition. Uh, it will end the submissions in July 12th, and tomorrow is the last day for the regular uh, registration. So I invite everyone to join us. And um, Alberto, see you in July. Thank you so Thank much. You. Bye, Bye, everyone.